Alright, this is the next video in the series on arrays with Java. The last uh, other videos we've covered simple arrays, uh, parallel arrays, and multidimensional arrays. This time we're going to talk about multidimensional arrays that are called ragged arrays. It's a type of multidimensional array. Uh, in the last video we talked about um, creating an array and we created a uh, parallel and a multi-dimensional array and we printed them out, we sorted them, had fun with them. In the multi-dimensional array we used it was what's called a square or a rectangle array in that <clears throat> all of the columns, uh, all of the inner arrays had the same number of columns. A ragged array has a different number of columns and so we're going to talk about how we can work with ragged arrays. So here's an example of some code that is pretty explanatory, but let me walk through it. First, in the very top here, we've got um, just creating a simple array. So you can see the difference between creating a simple array and creating a ragged array. So we have a simple array called int single array that holds integers, and we're declaring it, we're instantiating it, and we're assigning it values. Um, the length of this array is 5, so we have 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. That's all been covered before. So let's talk and move on to uh, how we create our uh, ragged array. Um, here we need to instantiate it, or, uh, declare it just like a multidimensional array, because it is a multidimensional array, and we have uh, two placeholders. Um, then we instantiate, we can instantiate our outer array separate from our inner arrays. So in this case, uh, we're instantiating the outer array and we're saying, okay, it's going to have two rows. Okay? So there's our declaration. Here's our instantiation of the outer array. Now we can also instantiate the inner array separate. And so here we're saying the first row is going to have an array with integers that has two columns. And the second row is going to have an array of integers with four columns. Um, so just a refresher. Uh, when we have a multi-dimensional array, it's really an array of arrays. And if you have three placeholders, it's an array of array of arrays. And the inner array holds the integers or whatever is declared. So uh, we can also assign values to our arrays. So we have our first row is zero, and that's our first placeholder. And the second row would be the inner array and the placeholder for that. So we have um, the uh, assigning values here, we're just assigning a 5 to the very first column, first row, 10 to the first row, second column, and then we're moving into our second set of arrays. And so the second row we're assigning 20 to the uh, second row, first column, um, second row, second column is 25, so we're assigning our values. Now we can also, if we wanted to, if we wanted to make this array a little larger, and turn into three rows, um, I can assign a whole array to an inner, because uh, remember the, the outer array is an array of arrays, I can say, well, let's go ahead and give it a whole array. So, and I could say the, um, I'll use two here, and I can give it the uh, whole array that's uh, the single array up there. Okay, so now what I've done is, uh, instead of just assigning them one at a time, I've given it a whole array uh, and just passed all those values in. So now we have uh, however many values were in that. So we have five. Here I have my for loop to print that out, and it's going to print out the, uh, it's got an outer loop saying, okay, here's the, uh, for the length of the outer loop, the array dot length, which would be the outer array, um, go for each row. The inner loop, the second for statement is for the inner loop, and that's saying for the uh, a row number, so it's grabbing the uh, the counter from the outside loop, putting in the inner loop, so we go from 0, 1, 2, 3, so our row length, and this will give us the number of columns, and we're going to print it. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, you should have all worked with this some by now, so this shouldn't be too strange to you. And there we have it. We printed our regular array, 5, 10, and here's the other numbers. Pretty simple. I'm going to start into something else then, and 
we're going to go into a little more complex use of ragged arrays and it's not as pretty and clean as assigning it, it uh, like this but it still is a great use of ragged arrays. We had a problem called student test scores and the student test scores uh, the deliverables for the problem were you had to ask for the number of students that the user wanted to enter and so they could enter five you know give you a number five and so then you would ask for the names of five different students and their scores on grades but it would also ask not just for the scores as in how you know a set number of scores it would ask how many scores do you want to enter for each student so for student one it would ask okay what student one's name how many scores do you want to enter for student one and you'd give it a number three and then it would ask you for three separate scores and then it would ask you for student two and you know, what's the name for student two and how many scores do you want to keep for student two and then you could and so you had this ragged array that you were building uh, collecting all this information and it's a ragged parallel array because the names would be held in one array in a string array and all of the grades would be held in a array of doubles for instance if you wanted to have you know 99.4 or something like that so it's kind of a complex problem and I think that's the the hardest part of programming sometimes is figuring out okay how do I get to the deliverables uh, it sounds over it seems a little overwhelming sometimes and so I tend to break a problem up into little pieces and um, the innermost part of the problem tends to be the first thing I start with then I work to the outside by the time I get to the outside it's not such a big problem anymore and the innermost part of this problem is storing the grades in arrays and so I'm gonna do that with a method and the reason I do that is I always examine a problem and say okay I want my main method to just be calling other methods and so that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to create a separate method here. And I'm going to say that uh, let's collect the grades with this method. And what I want to do is I want to be able to feed this method. Let's say I'm going to say I have a student uh, for student Bob. I want to hand this method. I want six grades from Bob. So I hand this, this method a six. And it's going to ask for six grades and then it's going to give me back the array that it creates. Pretty simple. So let's go ahead and create that. Let's go, we're going to give it back an array and remember we wanted doubles for this so and that's all we have to do to say that we're giving back an array and then let's call this collect grades. Um, we want to give it an integer which would be the length of the array so And maybe a name of the student and there we go we've got the start of our method now uh, we're gonna have to do a, a scanner input or a J option pane I'm just gonna use a scanner and I'm gonna type this quick and okay And so we're gonna have we're gonna give back a double array. So we want to create a declare array here. And the length is going to be the uh, integer that we're getting in. Okay, it didn't like something there. What did I do wrong here? Oh, I put the wrong bracket. Let's try the right bracket here. Okay, so we're going to return uh, the array. And uh, for this array, we just want to collect the information. So, And I can uh, basically say... So this, and I could use in int or the let's go ahead and use the out that length. It should be the same number because I'm assigning it to that number. Um, and what do we want to do here? We want to ask first for the grade. Uh, so
problems with that because i is a zero at first, so let's go i plus one. And if we put it in parentheses, it'll actually add it. If we just put a plus plus, it thinks it's just a, another part of the string. And so it'll give us um, the value of i plus the value of one. Okay, so that asks for uh, please enter a grade, and let's go ahead and uh, I don't have to really assign this to anything else since I'm working with doubles. If I were using a J option pane, I would have to, uh, at that point, I'd have to change it from a string to a double. Um, okay. And then the last thing we have to do is return it. So let's just go ahead and return the array. And voila, we have our we have our method. We're still getting an issue here. Let's see what the problem is here. It's a return statement. Oh, you know what? We forgot to put a uh, closing on our uh, we're in our for loop yet. Let's go and exit out of there. There's our return. Okay, so we've just created a method that's going to go and ask for a, a grade, and so now we can test it. Let's go back to our main, and to test it, we could say um, Just go ahead and um, let's do the it the uh, integer of let's do three three grades and for Bob and we want to we want to print the whole array so let's go ahead and pull our arrays function and what this does is it basically takes our array and makes it into a string Okay, so the, with this we can test our method. Let's go ahead and uh, save that. And does it like it? It likes it so far. Let's go ahead and run that and see what happens. Okay. So please enter grade number one for Bob. Okay, so what we've done is we've created our method here, and in our main program statement, uh, all I'm doing is I have one thing here, and it says print this out, but it calls this method and it passes control to this method, so we're into this method now. And the first thing it says is enter grade number one for Bob. So let's go ahead and enter uh, 99. Enter two for Bob is 77. Three is uh, 88. Okay, so it gives us uh, Bob's grades. Bob's grades are 99, 77, and 88. There we go. We're printing it out. Bob's grades. So we're able to collect the grades. So this method is going to collect the grades for us and return an array. So we're passing. Uh, information to the array. We're not passing an array to the method. All we're passing is an integer and a string to our array. It takes that integer, creates the int array length, asks for that number of grades, and then returns uh, the array back to the main method, and we're turning it into a string and printing it out. I'm going to stop there and we'll start another video with more on how we're going to collect grades for multiple students now.